on Sunday, the 10th of May, 2020, at about 3 p.m. I was in the sitting room with my mom, my son, my sister's son, and the three girls in my house. My sister's stepdaughter, my own cousin, and a niece that stays with them. And I started feeling sleepy. So I went into the room to sleep with my son. I was not feeling sleepy. I left my mom in the sitting room with my sister's son. And then the three girls went outside while the other boy's mom went to the salon. And our grandmother slept off. Then she was sleeping and then carry her phone. And then go outside. Go and call that man. He's our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Which time did you start talking to him? Or did he start talking to you? When I was coming back from school. This year? 2019. He used to carry us inside his car to school. Me and my friends. I used to greet him. One day, Anna noticed that he liked looking at me and my friends. So Anna told my friends, why is he looking at us? Mm -hmm. She said it's nothing. In 2019, did anything, did he come close to you? Did he ever touch you in any way in 2019? Yes, when I was going to my grandma's house. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know that he was following me. Anna turned back and I saw his car. And I started walking fast, but... Mm -hmm. So he now asked me, why am I walking fast? I said, it's not, that is not your problem. And I walk, he now said that I should come and enter his car so that he will just take me to my grandmother's, drop me there. Mm -hmm. And I enter. He now locked the doors of his car. And I tell him, why are you locking the doors? Because he, his mirror don't used to show. Mm -hmm. And I enter inside the car. He now start touching me. I wanted to open the door, but I cannot open it. She wanted to draw my skirt on off, but I slapped his hand. Mm. And I closed my leg back. I wanted to open the door, but I cannot open it. Okay. Now, this is 2020. That particular day on Sunday, what happened? When I finished call, I came inside and I come and dropped the phone. Mm -hmm. Then when the other one wake, woke up, we were not staying outside. The both of us. And I went outside. And I went and stayed there. She was asked, she asked me what was what am I doing outside? And I said nothing. She now said this one that I'm going outside and coming in. What is happening? And I said nothing. Then that man came. Mm -hmm. He said I should enter his car and I enter inside his car. He now drove down. He was not going good. He now went and entered one corner. He now locked the doors of his car again. He now touched me. He now locked the door. He now hold me tight and remove my pipe. So he carried me with force and put me on top of his chest. He pulled up his trousers too. When I came back home. Um, about an hour later, I woke up and then I asked, where is Angela? And I was told they don't know where Angela is. I was at the back door. How can you not know where Angela is? I left all of you when I was going to sleep. And I thought inside our grandmother and I say I'm back. So we checked around the compound. We didn't see her. When I came inside. So when I heard her voice and I called her. I said, Angela, come here. Where are you coming from? And I lied and said, I went to my friend's house. I said, which friend is that? She now asked me the second time, where did I go? She, she said, I'm lying. And I told her the same thing. Which of your friends? She called her name. I said, can we go to your friend's house? She now said, yes, but that she did not meet the friend. And I asked me, why did I stay so long? And I lied again. I said I was waiting for her outside. So if you did not meet your friend at home, where have you been all this while? 
She now said she just sat down in front of the house and after a while, she returned back home. At that point in time, I got upset. I removed the cane and then I started flogging her. When I started that, Anna said, Angela, tell me what happened. Anna told her the truth. I see there, there is one man. He's our neighbor. He liked looking at me and my friends anytime we are going to school. So she told me to go and show her his house. We now go to his house. We now saw him. We now meet him at home. When we reach the gate, she says, Is this house? And I say, Yes. And I was wondering, this is my direct neighbor, as in directly behind my house. So, first of all, I was in shock, as in, could it be somebody that close? At least I know the people in that compound. You know? So she entered and then to the first flat. And she stood there. And I said, is it this flat? She said, yes. And in that compound, that is the family that I think I am maybe most friendly with. At least I speak with the wife. Then she now said, let me open the gate. And I remember there's a young man that stays in the house. I opened the gate and I knock the door. So when the wife opened the door, I was not like, ah, oh, madam, how are you doing? She now said, fine. She said, I hope all is well. I said, all is well. I said, besides you and your husband, there's a young man that stays in your house, right? She now said yes. The now said, where is he? She now said that he's not at home. So I said, okay. I wanted to see him because um, there's something my daughter just told me. And now said, it's not the man, it's the husband. At that point in time, I almost went into shock because I couldn't speak. So I was dumbfounded and the woman was looking at me. I said, what happened? What happened? I told her, I said, let's go inside. She now, the husband and I came out. You know, you could just see that he knew. You could not deny it. You know, it was obvious. And the wife started slapping him. I have been talking to you on this matter every time I talk, every time I talk, every time I talk. The man now started begging. He just went on his knees and he was begging me, saying, Madam, please. Madam, please, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me, you know, and blah, 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 all those stories and all that. And I told myself, Oga, okay, first things first. My daughter has to go to the hospital. Every other thing we can discuss afterwards. So let's go. When we finish talking, we now enter inside his car and go to the hospital. Now, at this time, it was about 2 8. So it was almost lockdown time. So we're trying to get the quickest hospital we could get. So we could do whatever we needed to do and then know where to take it off from there. While all that was going on, the man, the woman's sister was now saying, Look, madam. Make sure you follow this matter to the end. This man did not start this thing today. This man did not start this thing today. My sister has been under a lot of pressure in this house. This has to end and this and that and that and that. I told her, Madam, don't worry. Let my daughter get medical care. That's the most important thing. The first hospital, Fountainhead Hospital. They called the doctor, but the doctor is not picking his calls. So we have to leave there. Then we went further down. We now went to Adonai Hospital, Adonai Specialist Hospital. And then we met a doctor there. And then I explained to him, this is the issue, this is the issue. We need um, tests, all these um, uh, test rip, rip kits, whatever they call it, carried out and all that. I need those things done. So he said, well, he will advise I go to a general hospital. These things are usually better with general hospitals. So I now told him, okay, from where we are, the closest hospital I can assess is either Nyanya General Hospital or I go to Maraba General Hospital. Now, Maraba General Hospital, which is a little further, well, I've heard stories of um, how you will go, they don't have this, they don't have that, they don't have that, they don't have that. So for me, I felt Nyanya was the closest place that we could get what we needed to be done. So I told him, I said, his, he also suggested that yes, the best place to go to is Nyanya. He will not advise us to go to Maraba because we may not really get the kind of help that we need there. So I was not like, okay, so how do we pass the road? It's already past it, you know, security checks and all that. How do we get to the hospital? So then I said, okay, don't worry, I'll give you a cover note. So he wrote a cover note on 
their hospital's um, letterhead paper, signed it, and gave to us to use, and to use it as a pass and go. So we got to the road, and then we got to checking point where the blockage was. That's where the main security checkpoint was. So when we got there, the of course there were a lot of cars that were stranded there because it was past it. So they had blocked the road as in you can't pass, you can't go anywhere. So people were trying to explain themselves and all that. So I had to come down from the car and then I went and met um, a female security personnel. She was wearing a t-shirt so I don't know if she was civil defense or she was police but I know she's you know military paramilitary or that so i explained to her i said this is the situation we have a rape victim in the car we need to take that person to nyanya general hospital so she came to the car she looked she said, where is the person i showed her the young girl in the back how old is she I said she's 14 she now said okay we need to go and see her boss do you have any past do you have anything i said yes the hospital we are coming from gave us a letter this is the letter so we now went to her superior so the superior said okay i should open the letter let him see so i opened it he read it he now said, okay. He now came to the car and checked. Do you all have your face mask? We said, yes, we all have our face masks on. He now said, okay, we need to go to my superior. So we now I had to go to another superior. That one was busy with people. We now had to stand there and wait for like 25 minutes before he was able to attend to us. And then when he spoke to us, he said, okay, what's the issue? I said, this is the issue. We have a rape victim in the car and this, that, that, that. that. So he told her, he said, go and bring the victim to him. He wants to see her. So we went back to the car and brought Angela to him. So he saw her. Are you the one? Yes. How old are you? He asked and all that and all that. What, who is the person that raped her? I said, my neighbor. Where is he? Where do we stay? I told him. Where is my neighbor? I said, he's actually the one driving the car. He now said, he's in the car. And I said, he's not said, okay. They should try to make way so our car can come closer. So the car came closer. He now told the guy off the car. He said, he should tell the guy to calm down. So the guy came down, he now called some of the security operative. He said, come, you push you, handle this guy, touch this guy. But that's the language you use, touch this guy for me, you know. So they slapped him a bit, slapped him around, made him lie down on the ground, you know, just made him do some punishments like that and all that. We're hitting him and all. And then at a point, he now said, Madam, don't you know how to drive? I said, I know how to drive. He now said, drive this car to the hospital. I said, okay, I can't do that. Reason being that he is the one that did the act. One, I want to believe that if tests are going to be carried out, they may need sample from him also. So if I go with just the girl without the man, I will still have to come back here. So please, okay, whatever you need to do, I beg you, release the man. So they didn't want to release him. I had to tell the wife to come down with her baby in her hand. I said, madam, come down, come and beg these people so that they can release your husband. Let's go. She was crying in the car. My husband had to come down. We now start begging the security personnel and all that. People had gathered, you know, of course, as usual, insulting him and this and that and that and that. So eventually the superior officer now agreed, okay, is there a policeman in the car? I said, no. He said, why do you need to go to a police station? I said, those things take time. And I needed this girl checked quickly because time is always of the essence in rape cases from what I have heard. Mm -hmm. So I needed her to get to a doctor as fast as possible, you know, for issues of um, evidence and, you know, checking and all that and all that. And of course, whether I like it or not, she will be in some sort of trauma and the rest. You know, a lot of people gathering on top of her and all that. So the man now said, okay, your husband can't drive. I said, my husband cannot drive. So he now said, I wish you would drive this car. He says, I cannot drive this car because this man has to go with us. I did not carry my purse. I did not carry anything. My husband did not carry his driver's license. We don't even have any way of identifying ourselves. So coming back, if somebody stops us, what do we do? If we need to pay bills, what do we do? All these things count. So this man has to go with us for all these purposes and let's get this thing done with. So we begged the, the security man and eventually, after a while, I think we were there for like close to an hour. Well, they, they had him for close to an hour. So all in all, with the waiting on the road and all, we were there for like two hours, 30 minutes before we were able to gain passage to go to the hospital. 
from one checkpoint. From one checkpoint. We now got to Nyanya Hospital. Entered and then we asked for where the emergency ward was. We went. Then we met the nurses on duty. They said, what's the problem? I said, it's a rape victim. What happened? I said, she was molested by my neighbor and we need her checked. Then I said, they can't touch her until we get a police report or we come with policemen. And I was like, okay, we came all the way from Abacha Road. It took us like, you know, with the time that we went to two hospitals and that, that's like over three hours. Now you want us to go and get a police report. That's going to take another time. At this time that I was talking to them, this was like to 11, past 10 to 11. When do I go to a police station to get a police and get a police report before you look at her and you take, you know? I said, okay, handle her. Even while you're on it, I can go and look for any police point or whatever it is that you want. But they refused. So while I was still trying to beg them, the man's younger brother, now I think, I don't know how he got a bike or how they managed, I think they passed some, you know, coral roads like that and they came to the hospital with the woman's sister that we left in the house. They came to the hospital and met us. So as he entered, he came, he collected the child from the man's hand and then he started insulting his brother. I said, look at you, look at how you have disgraced yourself, you know, and all that. And then he turned and looked at my daughter and he said, and you, I wish I could just slap you. How could you have allowed this thing happen? And I turned and I said, who are you? And he said, and he said, madam, is it not your daughter? I said, oh God, let me not lose my cool. At that point in time, I lost it. I started screaming in the hospital. Are you mad? This is a 14 year old girl we are talking about. Your brother molested her and you have the guts to come and stand here and tell me or to tell her you want to slap her. Who are you? At that time, I got angry and I started screaming and I was shouting because already they were not attending to her. And then you come with your own sanctimonious whatever. I didn't call it. Who called you into this matter? Who are you? If the person that did it knows that what he has done is wrong, where are you coming from? So I got I got really mad and I said I was screaming and everything. And you know, the security people had to come and they were like, Madam, take it easy, take it easy. What? Take it easy, take it easy. I said, No, 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 don't tell him, take it easy. This man should leave this place before I, I lose it and I do something stupid. You know, and all that. So the man's wife had to now drag the guy, and my husband, they dragged the guy, and they told, you know, they just took him aside very far from where I was, and all that. We still went back to the nurses and kept begging, and they refused. Now, at that point in time, I didn't have a choice, and I started reaching out to some of my old schoolmates and asking, who can help me? Who can help me? What do I do? Where do I go? How can I go about this thing? Because if just to cross one checkpoint took me that long, if I say I want to go to Meitama General Hospital, I may not get there. I may not get there. So if I don't get there, what do I do with the person that I'm carrying? How do I cope with the situation and all that? How do we come back? How do we go and all that? And maybe the security people may not be even as lenient as these ones that even listen to me because I'm living a completely different environment to another completely different environment. So going to Metama was not an option at that point in time. Of course, I know Asokoro is an isolation center, so we cannot go there with rape cases. They are dealing with um, COVID-19 issues. They're not dealing with um, small, small issues, you know. Then at that point, one of my schoolmates was now able to get in touch with somebody who got in touch with a doctor in Yanya Hospital, and then he now agreed to see Angela. So she now called me back and said, um, there's a doctor that we spoke with, he's coming, he will see you. Now, at that point also, I had gotten in touch with um, Mr. Marcos. They said he's in charge of a uh, native response something. I had gotten in charge with um, one retired AIG lady who is also an ex-student of my school. I tried to call you. I didn't get through. I had also gotten in touch with, I think, the president of our association, like that. I was getting in touch with a few people. So they now said, okay, is there a police station close to me there? Why don't I go and make a report? Now, at that point in time, I had another challenge. I didn't want to carry Angela with me and start walking 
to the police station because of course that's going to be another stress you know and all that and all that and i didn't want to leave her with the man's wife or with anybody related to him because there's every chance that if i leave her with them they go i don't know maybe talk to her threaten her whatever i didn't want to do that so i told my husband i said okay you have to go on my behalf so my husband and the perpetrator that's my neighbor now went to the police station which was not too far from the hospital but then the policeman now said they needed to see the parents actually the person that knows the girl the best which is me because some questions my husband could not answer being that she's my cousin so and now he now came back and said okay this is the situation that was after like an hour this was like now we're talking about uh, uh, around 12 or up past 12 and I was like, That's okay, midnight. Midnight. And I was like, okay. So, as they were coming in, was when I got the call that the doctor was willing to see us. So, and I said, okay, let us see the doctor first, then we we'll go back to the police station. So, at that point in time, the doctor was available to see her. So, and I said, okay, let's see the doctor, finish with him, then go to the police station before going home. And then, of course, the man's relatives were now calling. The wife was calling relatives. They were calling. And then one person now said she wanted to talk to me. She's a naval officer. I didn't get her name. And she was, you know, just begging, okay, since this has happened and there's no doctor to see the girl, why don't you take her home? We'll come back tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. I said, Madam, I will not leave this premises until a doctor looks at this girl. And if nobody will attend to her, I will sleep in this premises. The first person to enter here will see me tomorrow and will continue from there but i'm not going home with this girl because you cannot tell me to carry somebody like that home and go and sleep and tell her it's okay go to sleep it will be all right we'll go to hospital tomorrow it's not done i say it's not done so the woman was now saying that and eh, because she's far away she actually would have loved to help but there's nothing she can do i said there's nothing you can do please allow me to look for help so i caught the call on her i gave them back their phone and then we went in to see that other doctor that was willing to see us so he asked her questions okay when did this happen how did it happen where did it happen of course at that point in time he was still telling me that he, they usually don't do this kind of things he actually had to respond because a friend a colleague that he respected called him if not normal circumstances i have to come with police report before they will they will even talk to us or anything but you went with a minor to the hospital who yes. has been raped yes and you need to get police reports yes that's what despite the me. lockdown yes. in which you won't be permitted yes. to move around the man was really upset and um, they don't like when we go back to, when we go through back channels and this that 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 back channel to get medical attention for yes. a minor that was raped yes okay that's what he said to me and all that you know so he was really angry he was talking and then he would stop and then he will vent and then he will continue okay so what happened how did it happen how old is she you know he was asking questions and all that and all that and all that he said on normal circumstance he will not attend to her you know all those stuff i told him i said yes sir i know everything he was saying i was just telling him i said yes sir, i know yes i know yes i know and he was telling me he said you know all these things that you are trying to do we the doctors and the police we know better than you so this case can turn around at any point in time and this and that i said yes sir i know just help me check this girl that is the most important thing it's not about case or about what help me check this girl so he now said okay eventually he called a nurse a female nurse and said okay she should come so he said the girl should go and lie down after writing a few, some things on his um, report sheet he said she go and lie down and then at that point in time even the examination room the light had gone off there was no light yes so i had to he had to asked me to put on my phone light for him to use and examine her in nyanya general, general hospital. hospital yes she was examined with your phone with light my phone light so i owned my phone light and then he checked her and then he told me her hymen was broken and and then the nurse now said is that sperm 
he now said well he will not say it's sperm but there is secretion because he will not know until they test it mm -hmm. so she now said okay so he now said okay he's going to send us to the lab for further follow-ups and all that but i need to go and get a police report of course he kept coming back to that coming back to that i told him i said yes once i'm done from here i will go and get it so eventually he wrote out the number of tests after we had gotten the card opened the file you know paid for consultation and all and then we came back and then he recorded what he needed to record and then he wrote out the test we needed to do so we went we now went to the lab the lady in the lab now said this is night and i know that usually it's just for emergency cases yes and this is not an emergency but there was a rape that's what she said to me and this is not an emergency and i said madam a 14 year old girl was raped it is an emergency she now said eh, but um, some of these things that she used to do this test they are not available so she cannot run the test and even if she runs then the result will not come out this night so she now went through the list she said the only result that will come out is the urine microscopy mm. or something yeah. that's the only one that can come out now and i said what is the objective of the urine microscopy she said to check for sperm cells since they don't have the swab to do whatever 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 mm -hmm. and i said fine it's okay with me pass two mm -hmm. or two three in the morning. morning that's um 11th yes. now in the morning we left to come back by the time we got to that same checkpoint that we had actually passed it had been blocked by trucks and everything and the security men were nowhere to be found they had blocked the road so you can't even pass not with bike much less a car so now we're left with having to find our way home we now have to start looking for coral now the good thing is that I'm coral, bit, that's all this, where you can you meander know, from and just meander and just get home now the good thing is that I used to be a member of um, the evangelism team in my church so that area I used to be very conversant with it so I knew a bit of those routes so we started falling, falling, falling bad road but we managed to get through and then that took us we got home like 3.30 sometimes she come around in my place um, I sometimes if I see her doing something wrong I caution her we started uh, going that is becoming close to each other so after becoming close to each other but well, seriously nothing really happened since then nothing really happened just on Sunday but it was only on this Sunday that something happened. She called me here around two. I couldn't call her. She said she was standing outside. My two caller showed me Helen. Helen, something Helen. That's fine. Was that? What was that the first time she was calling me somebody's phone? Um, last week, she called me at midnight when I was sleeping. Yeah, two. I, I just I was I saw the call. I said, who is calling by two? You called me and what did you discuss? No, I no, I, I didn't talk. I can't 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 talk. I said hello, hello. I now slept off. So I now typed a message. I said, Who are you? Can't you sleep? Can't you sleep? Whatever you want to tell me, please let's talk tomorrow morning. I typed a message. So the message now came in again. And I said, I miss you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Actually, yeah. Maybe missing me, maybe, you know, saying it the way me and how we are. I would say she's my girlfriend. Actually, by 
this uh, January that just passed. She told me that that's her baby, that she was um, going to 17. On Sunday, so when she now called, she called me by, by two. I was in a meeting, serious meeting. I didn't see what happened. She said she wants to see me. So, then I have now went out. Oh, well, when I went out, it's so unfortunate. Um, along the line, something, uh, something happened. We just stay around. We didn't never we get. We are talking from there. Then I have now. When I, I use my penis and make love to her. Did I